Hello folks, to celebrate Tinder this week, I'm going to be sharing a tip every day for the next seven days. And today is tip number one, and it's about insomnia or periods of lack of sleep because of tinnitus. I get many messages from people saying that they're struggling to get to sleep because of their tinnitus and what to do. I myself have been through many periods of insomnia myself because of the tinnitus. And my tip for you is this. Whenever I'm going through these phases, I remind myself that it is exactly that. It's a phase, it's a short period of time that I'm gonna get through. I've actually just come out of one myself right now. And when I'm going through them, I do whatever I have to do to get through it. I get up, I have a cup of tea, I listen to a podcast, go back to bed, fall asleep. And I always remind myself, this is just the period. I'm going to get through it. I got through all the other ones, just the same. And if you keep reminding yourself that it's just a short period of time, it just helps. It makes it easier. And the easier it is, the easier it is to get through. So I hope this tip helps. There's going to be six more for the next six days. Thanks for watching. Bye. Hello folks, day two of Tinnitus Week, so tip number two, and this is to help prevent the severity of a spike. Sometimes if I've been in the recording studio and I've pushed my ears a little bit too much, or if I've been exposed to a loud noise, and I begin to feel the fullness in my ears and tension build at the back of my neck, I find that if I take action straight away, I can reduce the severity of a spike. What I do is with both hands, I massage the back of my head, the back of my neck, I manipulate my spine so that I'm moving my hips and my spine is gently doing this. I find that if I do that, I reduce the buildup of tension in the back of my head and it seems to reduce the impact of a spike. So instead of a spike lasting for two, two weeks, it can last for just two days and I get through it and I seem to be okay. It's a new trick that I've started doing and I find that it works. It just Sometimes a spike can be a buildup of tension in the back of your head and if you can reduce that tension by manipulating it and massaging it, I find that helps. Hope this tip helps. More tips coming. Thanks for watching. Hello folks, tip three for day three of Tinnitus Week, and this one is to encourage you to be more social. One of the things that happens to people that are struggling with tinnitus, maybe going through a spike or experiencing tinnitus for the first time, is that they feel that they need to protect their ears at all costs. And that can come at the price of, or the cost of not going out much, not going to pubs, not going to restaurants, that sort of thing. I encourage you to do more socializing, to go out more, to do more stuff that you enjoy and don't let tinnitus stop you from doing it. Be careful. Protect your ears, get earplugs that work for you, get earplugs that are good, spend a little bit of money, but go out because distractions are the key. The more you are enjoying yourself, the more you are doing things that you love doing, restaurants, concerts, etc., etc., the more you'll be distracted away from your tinnitus and the less you're thinking about it. Be careful with your ears, of course, that goes without saying, but be more social, have more fun. That's tip three. Hello, folks, day four of Tinnitus Week, so tip four. Try and give your tinnitus meaning by helping others. Every time you find a new resource that works for you, maybe share it with someone else who's suffering with tinnitus. Every time you find a new discovery, um, something that has helped you in a very small way, mention it to someone else who's suffering with tinnitus. Or if you've had tinnitus for a long time and, time and have built up some experience with it, maybe send a word of encouragement to someone that's new to tinnitus. By helping others, you are helping yourself because you are giving your tinnitus meaning. You are saying to yourself, I struggle, but if I can help someone else a little bit with their struggle, it makes my struggle have some sort of meaning. When I started sharing videos on tinnitus three years ago, I started to feel that by just helping people just a little bit, I was giving some meaning to my own struggles, and they've been quite bad these past three years. So in a way, by helping others, I've been helping myself. It's a scientific fact, um, acts of kindness, and this is a scientific research that I heard recently, acts of kindness, people that do acts of kindness live longer and they live healthier because you're releasing endorphins into your brain. So the irony of it is, and I think it's a beautiful irony, by helping others, you are actually helping yourself. And you don't have to be a science, uh, scientific or a, a scientist in tinnitus. It can be small things like, did this work for you just a little bit? We'll mention it to someone else. And like I say, if you've had tinnitus for a while, maybe just send a word of encouragement to someone that's new to it because you know how scary it can be. I hope that tip helps. More tips coming. Thanks for watching. Tip five for day five of Tinnitus Week, and this is a practical one of where to keep your earplugs. I really think earplugs are important because they allow us to move around, do day-to-day -day stuff, whilst at the same time as protecting our ears. But the thing is, you've got to work out where to keep them so that they're easily accessible and they're clean. Well, this is what I do. I've got a pair in my wallet, they're in the pouch of my wallet and they're kept in this black pouch so that they're clean and they're very easy to access. I can get to them in about 30 seconds. 
uh, and get them in in about 30 seconds. And these are the ones I use the most. It's really useful. I'm really glad I did that. But sometimes if I go out without my wallet, say it's the summer and I've only got my card with me, I've got a pair on my car keys as well. So it's attached to my car keys again in a pouch so that it's kept clean, but easily accessible so that most of the time I've got two pairs of earplugs and just in case I've got one without the other, I've always got a situation where I can protect my ears. Hope this tip helps. Thanks for watching. Bye. Hello folks, day six of Tim this week and tip number six and today's tip is ear defenders. I use ear defenders all the time. They're a big part of my hearing protection regime. Let's talk briefly about why you might want to use ear defenders instead of earplugs. Ear defenders are often quicker to put on. They're easier to take on, take off. And if you've got dirty hands, maybe you're working with something, you don't want to have to go through the whole thing of washing your hands, putting earplugs in your ear, etc. And sometimes you just don't want to wear earplugs. Maybe if you've been wearing earplugs for a long time, sometimes you just want something that you can quickly put on and quickly take off. I've got three pairs of ear defenders that I want to quickly show you and explain why I've got three pairs. So let's start with number one. These are my workhorse ones. These are 3M Pelta minus 36. I have them hooked up just around the corner here. So if, if there's a loud noise, some, something going on outside in the house, something going on in the kitchen, an alarm, whatever, I can just quickly put these on and quickly take them off. They're minus 36, they're ugly as sin, but they get the job done and they're very comfortable. So these are my workhorse ones, I've had those for quite a long time now. These ones are the ones I travel with if I'm traveling to a gig on an airplane or on a train and I don't want to wear earplugs all day long, knowing that I'm going to be wearing them later on in the evening for many hours as well. I use these. They have a slim cup, so they don't bring attention to themselves. So they look like, essentially, they look like headphones. They're minus 26, so it's pretty good attenuation, and they're Vanderfields. I'm looking actually to replace these with another brand. I don't know what brand yet. I'm looking for another brand that has a slim cup, so they don't look too big. Um, but are just slightly more comfortable. These are okay, I've been using them for a while, but they're a bit tight on the head, and I want something slightly more comfortable. These are my new ones, and I love these. These were £26 off Amazon, and I bought them not too long ago, and they are fantastic. They're Again, they're Vanderfield, so it's the same brand as the other ones, the last one I just showed you. They're minus 32, but to be honest with you, the attenuation you get with these is unbelievable. These are minus 36, and I feel like I get more attenuation with these. Um, they are they're sort of practical. You can take them with you, um, but they're not small. They're not like a pair of earplugs. You know, they're not going to fit in your pocket. But they are fantastic attenuation. I mean, really, really impressed. And they're very, very comfortable. And for twenty-six pound, I mean, cheapest chips really. Um, so really, really like these. I would encourage anyone that's sort of serious about protecting their ears, especially when you're in your home and you're not too worried about. What you look like. I mean, you don't want to be wearing, you know, I am a little bit conscious about wearing those on an airplane, but you know, my hearing is more important and they're so comfortable and so quiet that I don't really mind if they look a bit big. But I would encourage you to sort of look into ear defenders. It's a really great way to protect your hearing and they're very comfortable. And they just, the, the thing that I like the most is that they're very quick to put on and very quick to take off. I hope this tip helps. More tips coming tomorrow. Thanks for watching. The last day of Tim to Sweet 2023, and this is my final tip for this week. And that is to share with you a realization that I've come to over the last 12 to 24 months. And the realization is, is that living with tinnitus is like a roller coaster ride. It goes up and it goes down. This realization has been very important for me because it's made me, it's helped me get through the times when my tinnitus is up, when it's loud in volume, and it's helped me enjoy the times when my tinnitus is down, low in volume, because I know that potentially there's another spike somewhere around the corner. This realization has also helped me detach myself emotionally from my tinnitus. And I think that's key because when you let go of your tinnitus, the whole ride just becomes a lot easier because you're not so focused on it and you're not so focused on whether it's up or down. You just sort of let go. And I think that makes it easier. I hope these tips this week have helped and thank you for watching them and i'll see you on the next video